after I found tracks here, I walked around and around in a bigger and bigger spiral documenting all the track sites. There are about 11 sites in the Paso del Norte region. This sandstone has different names, but formed on the beach during the Cretaceous period. Um, and the beach ran from here all the way to Alberta, Canada. And so they call this the Dinosaur Freeway. I discovered the dinosaur tracks here at Mount Cristo Rey in May of 2002. I was here with a UTEP class. This is a quarry that was closed in 1955. And um, that year, the, um, the owner made it available to UTEP to come out here and map the rocks. Mount Cristo Rey is the best place in the region to learn to make maps of geology. All these dinosaurs, iguanodons, hadrosaurs, theropods, and ankylosaurs, lived or spent a good amount of time in the water, wading around in the water. Other track sites of similar age, you know, part of the dinosaur freeway, they're traveling along a coastal plain in herds or in groups. This is a, a, a little bit different of a site because it shows where they were wandering around. Um, and then this is a toe of a small one, but when I originally mapped this, it had small dinosaurs taking big steps and big dinosaurs taking small steps. And so this is one of the only places in the whole world that has evidence for family behavior in theropod dinosaurs. Tracks tell you about behavior. Bones just tell you about how the thing looked or stood. Tracks actually tell you how they lived their daily lives. And so one big question or one of the big questions in paleontology is um, whether or not theropods raise their young, whether or not they traveled with their young and spent time with them. And this track site is one of the only pieces of evidence for that. This whole surface was one layer of sand and they were gushing around. I've counted several hundred dinosaur footprints here. It's two to three per square meter. Most of these were underwater. They're gushing around in the mud and then a storm happens and a cloud of sand washes into the water and fills the tracks. It's tough to preserve footprints. An animal can make, you know, what, hundreds of thousands of or more, more footprints in its lifetime and maybe one will get preserved or none. There's over four miles of trails. All you need is a QR reader, a QR code reader, and you scan this code and it brings you to a website and you can see images of what you're looking at. There are 19 stops uh, and these trails actually go all the way to Artavino's Desert Crossing. The city of Sunland Park really, it behooves the city and, and us as a business community um, to really encourage this track site to be developed by the state if necessary um, and whoever can get in the picture because it's a they're great tracks and it's a, it's a really beautiful mountain, so it deserves it. Uh, more tracks need to be exposed. I would, I would guess that three or 400 tracks, more tracks could be exposed. El Paso is known for its geology. Students come from all over the world to study geology here. Everything's at the surface, exposed. And in my classes, I heard El Paso has everything except dinosaur fossils. And so now they can't say that anymore. Now El Paso has every, every topic in geology is present here in El Paso. Only in El Paso is produced by KCOS, El Paso PBS, in collaboration with local filmmakers and PBS Digital Studios. Only in El Paso is made possible by support from El Paso Museums and Cultural Affairs Department,
working to develop a world-class arts community in El Paso, Texas. El Paso Electric, proud to be your local utility. And visit El Paso, raising the profile of El Paso to attract visitors from near and far.